father-in-law has asked me a couple times if Rolex time is better than regular time, and I'm happy to report that the answer is yes, it is. Absolutely. Today at How to Drink, we're talking about classic cocktails and how to pair them with really just spectacular watches, courtesy of Crown and Caliber. Yeah, it's a bit tongue in cheek. Uh, it's an excuse to wear some excellent, fine timepieces. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you do? <laughs> And the first watch we're gonna pair up is this Tudor Pelagos. Now Tudor, for those of you who don't know, is sort of the kid brother company to Rolex. Uh, Rolex owns Tudor, uh, so all of Tudor watches are designed and built by Rolex, but it's intended to be a more cost-effective line. This is Tudor kind of going out on their own and developing their own watch from the ground up. It's a 42 millimeter titanium case. It's big, it feels big on the wrist. The bezel is ceramic, and actually the thing I like most about this watch is the action on the bezel. It's a 60 click bezel, and it just, it just feels phenomenal to work this dive bezel. It is ultra tough, ultra durable. It is the most rugged watch you can wear. This is a rough and tumble, bearded bear, chopping wood, rugged dug a tug a tug a tug Something you might wear while you're working around the house or you know diving down to a depth of 500 meters, which I don't think is possible. It's, it's a tough ass watch. This is a pretty indestructible titanium, lightweight, ceramic bezel, brute of a watch. He's a tough guy. Um, and so that's what we're matching up here. We're gonna match this up with something that's a little bit more refined. This is rugged versus refined. Now, when we think of rugged and cocktails, there's a few things that come to mind, but the most rugged cocktail is probably a stone fence. Now, a stone fence is a rugged thing to begin with. This drink harkens back to the days of the American Revolutionary War, a favorite drink of Ethan Allen, enjoyed at the tavern, by him and his Green Mountain Boys the night before they stormed Fort Ticonderoga. So the drink has some fame there. And it's a highball, that's what it is. It's a very simple drink. Probably in Ethan Allen's time, it would have been built without ice, but I'm gonna drop an ice cube in here anyway, just because I like my things a little chilled out, okay? An ice cube, building this drink a bit in reverse order. Um, we're gonna drop in two ounces of rye now, in Ethan Allen's time, this drink could have been built with rye, brandy, or rum. Uh, and actually, probably rum, uh, as that was a very popular spirit in the American colonies at the time. But we're going with rye. I think it pairs a little better with um, a cider. And I know, at this point, we just have rye and ice in the glass. Best practice for me, for my preferences, would be to stir it here. The only other thing we're gonna add to this is cider. And we don't want to stir with the cider in the glass. Whatever carbonation we can preserve, we want to. And if you stir with cider, of course, we're going to knock that flat. So let's get our dilution and chilling done mostly now. Our cider has been stored in the fridge. Um, Ethan Allen's would have been in a root cellar or something like that, or maybe even a spring cellar, nice and cold. And I uh, need some cider. Now, I love JK's Scrumpy Farmhouse Organic Cider. It just happens to be a cider I really like. Uh, Scrumpy is actually an English style of cider, if I'm not mistaken, from the western end of England. Is that appropriate to early American cider? You know, it's tough to say. I do know that what makes Scrumpy Scrumpy is that it's not made from a selection of apples, it's sort of made from the waste apples uh, from whatever's left over. And I don't, I don't, I think that's good. I think that's what we're going for here. Kind of a devil may care, I'll take what you got kind of a drink. We want to put six ounces in here. We can probably eyeball it and Honestly, that's the drink. If you so desire, garnish it to your heart's content. I don't think Ethan Allen would have bothered to. Of course, I built mine over ice. His would not have been. So, I mean, this is up to you how, how historic you want to be. I should make a note here, too, that I built mine with rye. This drink would have been sometimes made with cider and apple jack. So, a dilution of apple jack into apple cider, sort of like a fortified apple cider. It's, I think, more interesting to mix it up and bring in a different spirit, in this case, rye, which brings in spices and stuff like that that you won't find in an Applejack. Look at this taste. It's delightful. That is delightful. That is a crisp. Hold on a second. And how does it look in the, with the watch? That's the important thing. It looks great. You know it does, because I thought a lot about this. That is crisp 
and fruity, and you get those apple notes really strong, but it's also very sweet, but not overly sweet, like enjoyably, pleasantly sweet, almost like tea with a drop of honey in it. And I definitely want to mean honey. I, I get some honey notes. It's, it tastes like mellow honey tea, almost towards the direction of a brighter mead, not a heavy honey wine mead, but like a braggot or something like that. It kind of gets you a little bit in that direction. I, I thoroughly enjoy that. That is super duper cool. Let me think, does it make me want to raid a fort? Not me, but I'm not Ethan Allen, so what do I know? Just makes me want to sit by the fire and curl up with a good book and a very rugged watch. Courtesy of Crown & Caliber. And if you're interested in watches and want to know more about watches and are in the market for a watch, you should definitely swing by Crown & Caliber. If you use Drink150 at checkout, you can get $150 off of any watch over the value of $2,000 if you stop by Crown & Caliber today or tomorrow or the next day. I don't think it's going to expire. We're going to change it up now and take off our rugged watch and switch to the most refined watch they'll let me touch. <laughs> <laughs> so for our second watch on this episode, we're talking about a Rolex Day Date, in particular the Rolex Day Date. Yeah. It's the bigger version of a Rolex Day Date 36, which is 36 millimeters, it's a 40 millimeter version. That is one of Rolex's flagship models. The 36, uh, I think, is most commonly referred to colloquially as a Rolex president because of its uh, favoritism by presidents. Presidents love it. This particular Rolex Day Date 40 has the meteorite dial with diamond indices. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the indices are the hour marks on the face of the watch. The dial is the face of the watch, by the way, if you're not up on your watch lingo. Rolex only uses diamonds with IF clarity and D to G quality. Mm, lovely. And I will say too, you would think that a diamond encrusted watch would be gaudy. First, like five times I looked at it, I didn't even notice them. They are really perfectly tasteful. They, they, they blend directly into it. And I think that this could easily be an everyday watch for a lot of people, uh, myself included, if only. So this is a, a very refined watch. Where, where would this be worn? You know where this would be worn? This would be worn by somebody wearing a top hat and an overcoat in the back of a leper skin interior European import car on his way to a speakeasy. So far, so good. And that's what we're reaching into right now. We're gonna make a millionaire cocktail. It's a Prohibition Gatsby-esque cocktail, I think. Even though this watch wouldn't have been around during Prohibition, perfectly suited to this beauty. We're gonna need to start with an egg white. Gonna need a quarter ounce of lemon juice. This is not a particularly tart drink, but you gotta have some acid in there to emulsify that egg white. We want a quarter ounce of grenadine, um, and I do encourage you to make your own grenadine. I always do. If you look at the first ingredients on Rose's grenadine, the commercially available one at most of your grocery stores, you'll find that the first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. It really should be pomegranate juice. Um, good grenadine is made from pomegranate juice. I want two dashes of absinthe. I am using Pernod Superior. So I know Pernod for years made a pastis, a kind of imitation absinthe. Now they also make Pernod Superior, which is a true absinthe made as they made for decades during the Belle Epoque, for the height of absinthe. Certainly there were inferior absinths available at the time, but this is fine. Why is mine so not green? Well, it's been in this uh, shaker bottle for a while and absinthe that is good of high quality will lose its color over time. Three quarters of an ounce of orange liqueur. And when I see orange liqueur, I like to reach for my Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao. Uh, triple sec would be fine. You'll just find more character, more depth, more richness, maybe even a little bit more sweetness if that's something to consider from my Pierre Ferrand. This is closer to a Grand Marnier than a triple sec, so if you don't have access to that, look for Grand Marnier if you wanna replicate as close to possible the drink that I'm making right now. And we need two ounces of rye. Uh, this is a rye-centric episode. We're doing two rye drinks. So I like Rittenhouse Bottled and Bond Rye. Are there other ryes in the market? Sure. Um, if you can't get an American rye, could you use a Canadian whiskey, which is, of course, predominantly rye? You could. During Prohibition, it's very likely that they would have. There's an egg white in here, so let's dry shake that to emulsify our egg white first. Now, the thing to keep in mind about an egg white in a drink without ice is that it's going to expand. Uh, and try to fight you on the shaker. So this shaker is gonna try to come apart on me if I don't really 
bolt it together to the best of my ability. It's already starting. So one trick uh, that certainly would have been in the employ of bartenders in Prohibition, if you're having trouble with an egg white cocktail, is to wrap a bar towel around the seam of your shaker like so and shake with that as an aid to help you keep it things sealed. Break that open. Um, I always like to transfer to the small tin. Now we're gonna shake this over our standard fare, one big cube, one cracked cube. And I'm using this Rydell Sour Glass. Rydell recently came out with a new line of glassware uh, called Drink Specific, and that's what I'm using on the show these days. Uh, it's specific for cocktail making. It is great. We could garnish this with a few drops of bitters. And we'll make a little pattern in the foam here. Um, and so there we have the Millionaire Cocktail for this Rolex Day Date 40, which, I mean, you don't have to be a millionaire to buy it, but it helps. Mm. That is so good. It is creamy and smooth and flowery. It tastes like orange blossoms with the curacao and the orange and the lemon commingling. It is just so pleasantly citrusy floral, if I may, um, with a little bit of bite, a little bit of bite from the, the, the rye spice. Uh, it's sweet. It is on the sweeter end of the spectrum. I don't think it's overly sweet, but you would classify this as a sweeter cocktail. It has this orangey, dry, slight bitterness that rides right alongside that sweetness. It's just so pleasing when you put those together. I'm really enjoying this cocktail and I cannot, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't enjoying wearing the Rolex, the day date, a 40. If you want to know more about these watches or watches in general, Crown & Caliber is a great source of information and also there is no better place to buy or sell a watch. So swing on by Crown & Caliber, check them out, subscribe to their YouTube, I would appreciate it deeply. Guys, thank you so much for watching How to Drink the Show. I'm making cocktails and how to drink them and also how to pair them with watches sometimes. So if I had to pick between these two watches, the uh, Tudor Pelagos or the Rolex Day Date 40 to keep, um, it's tough call, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with the Roly. I think I'm gonna go with the Rolex. I think, um, I'd like to keep this one. I'm just gonna keep it. I like this watch very much. Is it creepy yet?